Here is your latest African news. Highlights Africa wide, African nations meet on critical nature conservation. Kenya Rare twin giraffes born at a Kenyan park. Ivory Coast Activists angered over Ivory Coast polygamy proposal. Africa wide, Uganda, Botswana, and Ghana are the world's top three economies with the most female entrepreneurs. Mozambique. Mozambique delays verdict in tuna bond scandal trial. Kenya. Archaeologists discover millet buried 2,000 years ago. Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe's Mnangawa slams foreign interference ahead of next year's election. Ghana. Ghana signs a 3.2 billion railway project deal with Telo DB Consortium. Diaspora. A judge concludes school slavery punishment assignment does not violate rights causing outrage. Africa-wide, African nations meet on critical nature conservation. Delegates across Africa on July 18th in Rwanda launched the first continent-wide gathering about the role of protected areas in ensuring the future of our planet. The IUC and Africa Protected Areas Congress, APAC, is being held just a few months before the COP15 summit in December when global leaders are aiming to adopt a much-delayed pact to shield nature from the damage brought by human activity. Organizers said APAC will aim to shape the role of protected and conserved areas in safeguarding Africa's wildlife, delivering vital ecosystem services and promoting sustainable development while conserving the continent's cultural heritage and traditions. Last month, the UN Conservation on Biological Diversity's 196 members held negotiations on the draft global biodiversity framework in Nairobi, but made only limited progress in ironing out differences. At the heart of the COP15 draft treaty is a provision to designate 30% of Earth's land area and ocean as protected zones by 2030. More than 90 world leaders have signed a pledge over the past two years to reserve nature loss by then, saying the interconnected threats of biodiversity loss and climate change are a planetary emergency. Kenya Rare Twin Giraffes Born at Kenyan Park Rare twin giraffes have been born at the Nairobi National Park, Wildlife and Tourism Cabinet Secretary Najib Balala has said. The CS on July 19th took to Twitter to celebrate the news. The incident last happened in October 2014 when a tour operator, Andreas Norzenberg, captured the birth during a safari in the Masai Mara National Reserve. The tour operator described the moment he and his tour group spotted the giraffe giving birth as special. According to experts, the twinning rates in giraffe is one in every 2,800,000. This explains the phenomenon that there are a whole lot more human twins in the world than there are giraffes in zoos globally. So rare are twin births for giraffes that experts report that out of 8,600 normal births worldwide, there are less than 40 twin births. Ivory Coast Activist anger over Ivory Coast polygamy proposal Women's rights activists in Ivory Coast have expressed anger over a proposed bill that will legalize polygamy for men, calling it a step backwards in the fight for equality. Polygamy was outlawed in Ivory Coast in 1964. It's prohibited in many parts of the world but remains widespread in West African countries. Rights groups say Ivorian women face systematic inequalities and discrimination. The United Nations Commission on Human Rights considers the practice discriminatory against women and has called for its eradication. The bill has to be reviewed by the Constitution court before it can be put to a vote in Parliament. Africa-wide Uganda, Botswana, and Ghana are the world's top three economies with the most female entrepreneurs. The 2021 MasterCard Index of Women Entrepreneurs has for the third consecutive year ranked Botswana at 38.5%, Uganda at 38.4%, and Ghana at 37.2% as the countries with the most women business owners globally. The index benchmark indicator is calculated as a percentage of total business owners. This is the fifth edition of the program, which puts the spotlight on the significant socioeconomic contribution of women entrepreneurs around the world, including Africa, and provides insight on the fact factors driving and inhibiting their advancement. In many African countries, women advancement is hampered by less supportive entrepreneurial conditions, a lack of funding, less opportunities for high-level education, as well as structural barriers. Despite the challenges presented by the pandemic and economic downturn, MasterCard's research indicates that women entrepreneurs in Africa are resilient and adaptable, particularly those in low- and middle-income economies, often suppressing men in terms of entrepreneurial activities. Mozambique. Mozambique delays verdict in Tuna Bond scandal trial. 
A court in Mozambique has delayed for three months the verdict in the biggest corruption trial in the country's history. The scandal involves more than $2.7 billion of undisclosed state debts, money that the government borrowed to set up a sophisticated tuna industry to buy trawlers and military patrol boats, but much of it was allegedly diverted to corrupt officials. Those accused include Ndambi Nguibiza, son of former President Armando Nguibiza, and 18 others. They were charged with blackmail, embezzlement, and money laundering. The younger Nguibiza denied the charges and say the accusations were politically motivated. The verdict was due for 1st August but has now been pushed back to 30th November. Judge Efigenio Baptista cited the complexity of the case and the huge volume of evidence amounting to 30,000 pages as the reason for the delay. The trial started in August last year on the grounds of a maximum security prison on the outskirts of the capital Maputo. Kenya. Archaeologists discover millet buried 2,000 years ago. Archaeologists have discovered millet they say was buried 2,000 years ago in Teso North subcounty Busia. The discovery was made after a series of research undertakings by U.S. and Kenyan archaeologists who had collected seed samples at the Kakapel National Monument and Cultural Center in Teso North. The lead researcher in an interview said the findings will help communities in Busia and Kenya to understand the feeding ways of ancient man by the time the samples were excavated under a rock in Kakapel. The finger millet had approximately 250 seeds out of the about 500 seeds excavated to facilitate the study. The remaining seeds were from various local grass species. The finger millet seeds were excavated underneath one of the caves at the Kakapel rock that is estimated to be 270 meters high. The discovery, according to the local community, may open up tourist activities in Kakapel, which they said on Friday can benefit the area. Kakapel Monument and Cultural Center Deputy Curator Anthony Odero said the findings are an eye-opener, particularly to the local community, which she called upon to preserve ancient lifestyles, millet, or derosade, is a food crop that should be adopted for cultivation not only in Kakapel but across the country because of its health benefits. Zimbabwe Zimbabwe's Munangawa slams foreign interference ahead of next year's election. President Emerson Mnangawa has said when the country reaches the home stretch to general elections next year, he has noted worrisome and meddlesome tendencies from foreign missions accredited to the country. Mnangawa wrote in the state run Sunday Mail that his government frowns upon the brazen effrontery against the country's sovereignty, which is in clear violation of basic provisions of international law governing interstate relations. He claimed that there was a gross disdain for sovereignty and that the worrisome propensity is likely to get even more blatant close to Zimbabwe's harmonized general elections slated for next year. Besides banning foreign journalists from working in Zimbabwe in the past, the country has no record of deporting diplomats. Ghana Ghana to sign $3.2 billion railway project deal with Thelo DB Consortium Ghana's government will sign an agreement next week with Thelo DB Consortium for a $3.2 billion project to develop and make operational its Western Railway line, the company said in a statement on July 19th. Thelo DB is a South African railway entity incorporated between Thelo Ventures, an African industrial company, and Germany's Deutsche Bahn Engineering and Consulting. The Thelo DB Consortium also includes Ghanaian partner Transtech Consult. Ghana's Western Railway line runs a total of 339 kilometers from Takoradi port to Kumasi, but only 66 kilometers is operational, according to the website of Ghana's Ministry of Railways Development, where it is listed as a priority project. Two mines are on the route including the Ghana Manganese Mine at Nsuta and Bokshite Mine at Awaso, which used to use the railway until it collapsed, according to the ministry. The line also goes through Ghana's cocoa growing region, and, and cocoa used to be transported in significant quantities by rail, but has not not been since 2006. Transportation of cement, mining equipment and petroleum will also benefit from construction of the rail line, the ministry added. The agreement will be signed on July 25th at a ceremony with President Nana Akufuado, the company said. Diaspora Judge concludes school slavery punishment assignment does not violate rights, causing outrage. 
A federal judge has ruled in favor of the Sun Prairie School District regarding a lawsuit filed by two black parents. Their children's middle school located in Wisconsin handed out an assignment that asked students how they punished a slave in ancient Mesopotamia and they believed it was harmful and inappropriate. Irvins and Priscilla Jones also say the Black History Month assignment in February 2021 violated their civil rights and their children's. After an internal investigation, it was discovered that three teachers devised the assignment themselves as the question was not included in the school district's curriculum on ancient Mesopotamia. The question appeared on a 6th grade homework question at Patrick Marsh Middle School and was given to students on the first day of Black History Month. It read, and I quote, A slave stands before you. This slave has disrespected his master by telling him, You're not my master. How will you punish the slave? End quote. The question read. The assignment said the answer was, and I quote, According to Hammurabi's code, put to death, end quote. It quickly led to online outrage. The teachers were placed on administrative leave and ultimately resigned, though a decision has been made in federal court. Complaints that the district violated state law will be reviewed by Dane County Circuit Court. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, follow, share, and like our video. It's the best way of supporting us. And remember, Africa is watching.